Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel, and we're back with another episode of the Skyrim Special Edition Modding Guide. Have you ever gotten tired of your vanilla heads-up display and wanted something like this? Or this? Well, you can with SkyHUD. It gives you many options to change your HUD and allows the flexibility to make adjustments on your own. I'll go over the base mod installation and the available presets for both Nexus Mod Manager and Mod Organizer 2. Then we'll delve into the configuration file and offer some insight on the settings and what you need to know. Let's get started. Alrighty, here we are at the desktop and I've got four different components that I'm going to show you right now and I've also got Nexus Mod Manager up and ready to go, and I've got Mod Organizer 2 up and ready to go. We're going to show you everything that I possibly can to make you all understand this and how it all works. First thing we're going to do though is go take a look at the mods themselves, and we have Sky HUD Beta by Farkas, Faha Arcus, I guess it's uh, pronounced could be. Mod number 463, you can see that it is Sky HUD Beta, and it is Toggle HUD elements on or off, scale sizes, change positions, and swap select elements with alternative versions. Uh, toggle HUD elements is basically going to be your clock and your compass, but you can go ahead and take a look at all the configuration files later on when we start talking about that stuff. Features, hide, scale, move, and remove HUD elements to your liking or use vanilla replacement with no drawback. Auto hide compass and crosshair, alternative HUD elements, dot crosshair, ammo display, slim compass, Blah, blah, blah. I'll let you all read all this stuff. How it works is that customization is done through editing the skyhud.txt file. And I'll show you where that is. You can just go ahead and use, you know, how to read all this stuff. And I'll kind of walk you through it. One of the key things, remember, if using the compass auto hide feature, you'll get two potions of Wayfinder that will auto refill. So you always have at least one in your inventory that will last for 10 seconds. You can see your compass and then it will display again. So you can go ahead and read all this stuff down. New installation, stuff to know that I would go ahead and say, you know, we're going to be walking through in this video. You don't need to worry about that too much. Upgrade to new version. Uh, this has not been updated recently. I think that it's probably done for right now. But just to keep this in mind for the future, if they do have a new update for whatever reason, make sure you read this and the documentation. Compatibility and add-ons. We'll talk about two other possible alternative skyhead presets but that's what we're going to be talking about in this video and other compatible mods that uh, you can go ahead and take a look at so what are we going to be doing well you know skyhead consists of two components you have the main skyhead mod and then you have a preset both of them need to be installed you can only have one preset at any given time so let's take a look at the files in the main files you have skyhead the bane wizard this is specifically designed for Rybash. I would say if you're using Nexus Mod Manager, Mod Organizer 2, I would say mm, not a, what we need. So it's the second one we're going to look at, the SkyHUD 060B version 3. Full mod installer for Nexus Mod Manager or equivalent, that would be Mod Organizer 2. And manual preset installation that you'll need to get a preset. But you can get the presets out of this mod and manually install them if you wish. Uh, the next one we have is Sky HUD Presets version 2. Read the description about upgrading before download presets only. These are the presets. So there's two components, Sky HUD and then the Sky HUD presets. And there are other alternative presets that are available. So you don't need to use one of the five, I believe, that are in this preset. There are other ones, and we'll go take a look at those right now. You have alternative Skyhood presets by Kugane, mod number 6349. And he offers uh, three or four different ones that actually look pretty good. I'll let you take a look at those pictures, but there is a full mod installer that will show you the different options. And under files, you would get this one right here. I would you know, probably not give this one a go because it is 21 by 9 resolution. Uh, unless you're one of those unique ones, you want to do that. But this is an option. And then you have the ultra small preset for Skyhud by Dark Dominion. It is mod number 6237. And this is the one I use personally. This, so you know what, what this is. Uh, basically, it's a different preset. And the, you can get this one right here. You can get the Oblivion style Skyhud. I have not tested this. I have not taken a look at this. But it is a different preset. Remember, 
we are talking about two components. This is the main Skyhud page. You need to have the main Skyhud and then have preset. So those are the options. You'll need to get one of these and or one of the other ones provided by Alternative Skyhud or the ultra small preset, whichever one you want. But I've got all of them on my desktop and we are going to open up Nexus Mod Manager and we'll take a look at them. You can see I've already dragged them all in and dropped them down and you can see this is basically my, my nothing folder so you can see how they would install. If you're installing this, I would place this nearer at the top as you can, uh, right next to the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patches. So now that I've all dragged them in, let's go ahead and, and activate the first one and it's always gonna be the one you wanna do first and that is the Sky Hut. Activate that and you're gonna get the faux mod. And it's gonna give you a bunch of information. I would read this through. There is an ESP and a BSA file included in this, but you basically need to have a preset along with it. So we go ahead and click next. Uh, the pack will only install this guy at ESP and plugin and BSA archive with no customizable preset. You need that, but we've talked about that. Go ahead and finish that install. And we are good to go. There we go. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is install one of the presets. And like I said, there are a number of options. Preset Sky HUD, this is the one that came with the main file. And it has five options, I believe. We'll take a look at that in the, in the faux mod. The ultra small preset, which is only one. And then the alternative Sky HUD presets, which has three, but has a lot of different options. So you can go ahead and use the faux mod installer on that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this guy, preset Sky HUD. Activate that. And you can see you're gonna have a faux mod installer. And we'll open this up so you can see all the different options. And you have default. This really should be named, in my opinion, vanilla, because it is a little confusing. This is your vanilla setup. And the reason why this is here for an installation is that if you want to just change some small elements but not change the whole overall look of it, you could do that by using the configuration files. But that is an option to install it. You have the small preset, which you can see is slightly smaller overall than the default. You have the Skyhead default, which includes the compass is much smaller, and you have a clock, and you see they've moved some elements around. Then you have the Skyhead Oblivion. A little different still, it has a dot in the, for the compass, or for the crosshair. The elements been moved around a little bit, just different stacking on things. You can just see the different elements move around. And the Skyhead Hardcore, which is just the compass. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you get. So I would say go ahead and choose one. Uh, I would go ahead and say, let's choose the Skyhead default and finish. So that is that one. If you wanted to go ahead and say, uh, I've tested this out. I can even play with it. If I want to install a different one, you would right click on it and reinstall the mod and then choose whatever different one you want. There is no way that I know of in Nexus Mod Manager to install all of them and test them out in rapid sequential, but you know it's just a choice. So there you go, and finish that up. So you've got that. Now, deactivate that, and we are going to go ahead and, let me just make sure we do this, because Nexus Mod Manager was kind of weird. Deactivate from all profiles. Uh, the alternative Skyhead presets, we'll do that one next because it is the second most uh, used one you can see that it basically will rework the complete installer help you install it blah 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 proceed next these are the different options open this up so you can see it you have the alternative oblivion you can see where the elements are on that it's slightly different than the oblivion one that was included in the sky huts presets with the main mod you have the witcher 3 alternative you see they've moved them all up at the top. That's kind of interesting. And I'm not really sure where these elements are, but the sneak meter's at the bottom. So you can see where all the dialogue and things are. You have Reaper, which is all of them are at the bottom now. So even the compass is at the bottom here. And then let me self-pick. That is basically, consider it a vanilla version. So pick whichever one you want. I'll just go ahead and say Witcher. And you have more presets options. You have default, which is you can install all the that you can install all the presets and select in the end of the installation which one should be activated for use. Basically, it's telling we're going to put in all the presets. 
regarding these elements, clock, clock and health enemy meters, and auto hidden compass. And you can change them in the configuration file. You have clock, and then you have clock with enemy markers, and then the auto hidden compass. The enemy hidden markers was not an option on one of the four uh, presets for Skyhead originally. This will in integrate all of them in together, but you can change those in the configuration file for the other ones. And then with auto hidden compass, the auto hidden compass is the one with the wayfinder potion. So we'll just go ahead and put those, mark those in. You can have two of these. And if you have, you know, you can't, it doesn't make much sense to have all three because you have two with clock now. So just choose one or two, whichever one you want, and click next. Before you install this, back up your plugin. Uh, select which one should be a activated to use in game. This is the one that's going to be activated by the Wayfinder in Clock, Clock of Enemy Compass, and Auto Hidden Compass. So none is recommended. Okay. I clicked the wrong one. I would say just leave it because I've activated once in the previous menu. So I'll just leave that as it is and click next. Happy playing, go ahead and finish. It's a little more complicated to install, but you do have some options. So that would be that one if you needed to redo that one. Obviously, you would right click and reinstall the mod and you'd go through the whole process again. I'm going to cancel that. And then finally, let's just deactivate from all profiles. There we go. And then finally, the ultra small preset, when you activate this one, you'll get a full mod that says, yeah, you're going to do this. Okay. <laughs> no options, just do it. So with those out of the way, you can see all the different foam mods and different things. Let's talk about where the manuals are and the different text files. Under Skyhead, if you right click on it, you have the open readme. You have the Skyhead reference manual.pdf. I'm going to open this up and show it to you real quickly. And there it is. It has all the different information, but we're going to get more into that later on. So you can have access to that later on when you start configuring this stuff. For the ultra small preset, and this goes for all the presets that are included in the preset Skyhud and the alternative Skyhud presets, you would then right click on it, open README. Open README is a bit of a misnomer. It is not the README.txt, it is the text file for configuration. And there you have it. So you can go ahead and make your changes, do whatever you wanted, and then click save after you've made your changes. But I'm going to go ahead and deactivate these because I want to talk about configurations more when we start getting to mod organizer because it's just easier to show you things. Okay, mod organizer two. You know, I've showed you installation of all these different things, but basically it's the same sort of thing. You're going to have, you can install each of these through the full mod. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I, I kind of wanted to, you know, go with. I already have my ultra small preset. It has some changes in it that I kind of wanted to do and I didn't feel like reconfiguring it all for later on. So I'm going to leave that installed. And quite frankly, it's it's not that important. But I do have the Skyhead already installed. Uh, let's do the Skyhead presets first. You can see the phone mod once again. I'm going to show you a little trick. You have the install Skyhead with the default Skyrim settings. That's the vanilla. Small Skyhead default. Let's just say that we're going to install this one. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to rename it default. And say, okay, I'm installing the Skyhead default. Our new name will be Skyhead preset default. And install. Scroll all the way down. We're going to slide it all the way back up. And under Skyhead. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah, I know. We're going to do it again. Skyhead presets. Let's say hardcore. And I'm going to name that, change that over to hardcore. And install. And we slide it up. And you see what I'm doing here? Is that I am actually creating multiple mods that I can test out very quickly by just clicking or unclicking however I want. If I wanted to say, let's try out the Skyhead preset, I'd click it instead of my ultra small preset and go go out and play it and try it. Or if I said, let's try it hardcore, unselect that one and do the same. Now, the same thing goes with alternative Skyhead presets, but it's going to take me a little longer to go through it. Let's just say, call it Witcher 3. 
and we'll call that Witcher 3. Next, I'm just going to click some default, default, next, install. And see, we now have this one named differently. You see, it's overriding because I activated it, because it's overriding this guy had preset.txt. So now you have a bunch of them. You can do the same thing with all these. Just keep reinstalling all the different versions and you can test out which ones you want. That's one of the good things about Mod Organizer. So, okay, let's go ahead. I'm just going to de-click this and I'm going to show you where to get some of these files. Let's go ahead and activate my ultra small preset. And the first one we're going to take a look at is the Sky Hut. And there's two ways of doing this. I would suggest go ahead and doing it this way is to open it in Explorer. You can also go ahead and double click on the mod and go to your file tree, but you can see the different things. Now on this, the manual is actually under interface, Sky HUD, manual, and you see the manual right there. We're gonna minimize that down this time. If we go close this down, if we wanna see the preset itself, the ultra small preset, do the same thing, right click on it, open it in Explorer, just cause it's easier. You can actually open it with, with Notepad++. Interface, Sky HUD, Sky HUD text. And we are going to open it with Notepad++. And you can see now it makes uh, a little more sense. I mean, Notepad is not the greatest for editing these type of things, but you can have Notepad++ is always a great thing. One of the things I suggest when, if you try to configure these things out is go ahead and have both the manual with all of its different information and your text file open at the same time. That way you can kind of say, well, let's go ahead and check this. What, what are we looking at here? And this is the reference manual. In the introduction, what is Skyhut? It gives you all the different you know, features of it, all the future plans, and some important notes overall. This is the configuration chart. This will tell you all the different elements on screen that you're seeing. You can see whether you can change them by visibility, by scale, and position. Not all of them can be changed by all these different parameters and alternative modes of course if you want like a instead of the crosshair you would get the dot okay you can see the crosshair is right there you can see that it is an alternative mode but as far as you know game settings that's visibility that's opaqueness it goes by the visibility opaqueness shown in the game but you can see all these different things page next page is the extra features you have the slim compass so when you see alternative compass in the text files, that's what it's talking about. The dot crosshair, the in-game clock system, the alternative ammo system, which I actually do like, that's very nice. And the left-handed aligned health and stamina meters, basically you're gonna be moving them around, but that gets into your text configuration and fixed letter space for animated animation. This is, this is actually quite nice. And this is the skyhead reference dot any. And it should be skyhud.txt reference, but eh, I'm, I'm being niggly. All these different things mean different, you know, have different parameters based on the game. I'm going to walk you through it, but I want you to show you the manual first. Scale is very important because it'll change the size of the different things, whether it shows up or whether it doesn't. And this is positioning. This is, of course, an X and Y axis interface to show you where the different things are positioned on the screen. And of course, you have also positions based off of the text in the in the window. Basically, if they get crunched up, you'll I'll show you how to change all that. And then finally, the element size cheat sheet, kind of width and things. I would just read this. It's not that important. I'm gonna close this down because I understand enough about what I'm doing here that I can go ahead and move forward. Okay, this is your interface dot text file. Basically, this is your configuration thing. And you're going to show sections, gameplay, interface, scale, and position. These first notes were, are regarding gameplay. Persistent aim, enable crosshair and stealth. So you can see basically B persistent aim is right there. If you're in stealth, the crosshair will automatically come on if you have the right weapon. Auto aim, auto hide, disable aim when, when weapon is sheathed. Override games crosshair setting when enabled. So aim auto hide is enabled on mine. It may not be on yours, but you can see whatever text file you have. So basically if I sheath my weapon while in stealth, it will come on and remove the dot or crosshair, whatever you have. And the B 
Compass Auto Hide is basically the hide compass all the time and then consuming a potion of Wayfinder enables it for 10 seconds. And you can see in the picture over here, you can go ahead and activate it in, in your menu or you can make it a favorite and hotkey it in your favorites tab. Interface, these are the sizes and scales. And you can see there is persistent clock, always show clock even outside of HUD. Persistent clock is right there. I do not have mine activated, but you can outside of HUD. If you want to have an auto hide, that is the next feature. And that is the auto hide feature. If you have it uh, set to one, it will show up on your screen and then auto hide it when you drink the potion. Or it'll show up when you drink the potion and then auto hide it after 10 seconds. And then B sync meter fade, sync player meters fade in. Useful for oblivion style placements. Okay. <laughs> read the read the manual on that you know what you're getting on these these are all the alternative arrows if you like the alternative arrow one uh you can go ahead and make it one instead of zero i have it set at zero because i've reduced the size down, of mine down quite a bit alternative compass that is the slim compass one would be active zero you would be vanilla dot crosshair one would be a dot crosshair zero would be the t-bar or the kind of x formation that uh, vanilla has Alternative health, alternative stamina, bar opacity. Uh, this would change the compass bar for that, but not the crosshair bar. Okay, does that make sense? So you can actually change the opacity of the compass bar, but not the crosshair using this feature right here. A bar opacity would be 100 in this setup. You can change that if you wish. Scale, these are, I've reduced basically all of mine down except for the clock because that doesn't show up very often. But even the compass marker set. 0.75. There is one final note on this that the compass crosshair in the small preset was 0.8, but my eyes are really old and I can't see it. So I had to increase it a little bit. But you can see everything else is lowered down. Now, this is the big one here. This is position. Lock setting has to be set at zero for positioning to take effect. In other words, when you're looking at your configuration files, if it is zero, it is moved around. If it is one, it is locked into place. So if you scroll down and see under B luck, enemy health equals one, there's nothing there. Even if I were to put in parameters into these things for enemy health to move them around my screen, they won't move because they're still locked in place. You need to put that to zero before moving them around. That's a very important note and not a lot of people pick up on that. B lock crosshair, don't mess with this. Crosshair is always gonna be zero, zero. I don't know why you would wanna change your crosshair but you get the idea. Health meter, you can see it's set at zero, so it can be moved around. All these different things have different information. Then you can see it's been moved around. Even the compass has been moved on the y-axis a little bit downward. B locked activate prompt, zero is unlocked. And these are some of the activate names and activate info position y-axis. These are up and down y-axis for the names that you, when you're looking at a item on screen with your crosshair. Now, some presets are a little funny, and if you find out due to your screen resolution or whatever that they appear scrunched up, I would go ahead and increase these numbers just a little bit to see what's happening. You can figure that this is just spacing between the different elements as far as the names go, but this is one thing you need to know. If you have this set at zero, you can move them around. Your stealth meter, mine's locked and it's set at zero. Just different information here. This is just different information on the clock. One other thing I want to show you. Let me go find it. There we go. The only thing that is not really mentioned in the documentation is F enemy health equals whatever. This is under the scale setting. Uh, the scale for enemy health meter has been reduced down in my setup to 0, 0.0. So you will not see it. But you notice that under the show these different things, the health meter is not there for you to activate or to deactivate. So if you want to hide the enemy health meter 100%, you'll have to set it at 0, 0.0. So just keep that in mind. It will always stay kind of where it is and you can move it around, but it doesn't have its own one or zero indicator for enemy health. So if you want to eliminate it completely, set it at 0, 0.0. And that goes for all the different factors too. 
If you don't see something that is able to be hideable, you can just change the scale all the way down to 0.0, .0 and it'll go away. Don't try to move it off screen. That's just a bad idea. But that's it. And when you're all done, just click save. Just got to close that down. That's all you've got for it. I've Hopefully I've shown you enough different options here. I tried to play with uh, just the ultra small preset. Um, I may put enemy health back up because I've been running into guys. I have no idea how, how tough they are. And I should be running away, but I'm not. But you can go ahead and try out the different ones. And this is one of the things about, that's great about Mod Organizer. So that's all I got for you right now. I hope I uh, explained SkyHUD. Use the manual that's included that you can access either through Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer to help you configure your uh, text files and then play with it. See what you like, see what you don't like. You can try all the different presets. And if you don't like one certain element of a preset, you can change it. That's all I got. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel and I'm signing off.